Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra's Lair uh, recording tutorial section here. And today we're going to be talking about Open Broadcaster Software, or OBS, which is a tool used primarily for streaming, but is also a really nice way to record locally and is not necessarily set up to do so by default, and some of the settings can be a little bit complicated and a bit confusing. I know I had a little bit of trouble setting it up initially, so that's why I've made this handy-dandy tutorial to help people out. So we'll just click the settings button there on the front page. Under general, we don't really need to mess with anything unless you want to save your settings profile so you can use multiple people if you've got other people streaming. Otherwise, we'll just jump here into encoding, which is our primary one of our primary areas that we want to pay attention to. And we want to set the encoder to X6264, which is H264. Do not use CBR. This is for streaming. You want to set your quality to 10, and this is generally the um, quality level of your videos. If you have a slower computer, you may want to pay attention to this and turn it down slightly to something like 8 or 7, because it can tax your hardware if it's a little bit on the older side. Next, we want to set our max bitrate to 5000, and our buffer size to 5000. Of course, clicking the Use Custom Buffer Size so that we don't have to worry about anything fancy. And this just basically allows our video to have the maximum bandwidth it needs to do its encoding and writing to the disk and keep a lot of fancy quality. Audio encoding, um, this should just remain default. You don't need to play with this. However, take a moment to pause the screen and make these match up if your settings are for whatever reason different. After that, just click apply down here and go down to broadcast settings. This has absolutely nothing to do with setting your computer up to locally record, but it is very nice to set your start recording hotkey and your stop recording hotkey so that you can quickly just click these when you're inside of a game and you don't have to tab out unnecessarily and potentially jank things up. Some games are touchy like that, so we just want to take care of that ahead of time. I also suggest having these as separate buttons because you don't have to worry about a toggle. This prevents things like recording when you don't want to be recording and not recording when you do want to be recording. After that, let's jump into video settings. First up, we have the video adapter. Sometimes this can be just set to the default device, but if you have more than one video card or it's for some reason being a little bit finicky, make sure you pull this down and select whatever your primary video card is that has the most beefy power. After that, you just want to double check the sizes of everything that's being recorded. I also like to disable arrow, which is um, what makes the menu bar down here nice and pretty and see-through. It's not necessary while you're recording because you're not obviously staring at your desktop and it saves you on some uh, a slight amount of resource hogging. After that, you just want to make sure that your recording size is what you want it to be. My default monitor size is 1600 by 900. I'm fine with leaving that that way. I don't have to worry about um, any sort of downsampling. But if you want to downsample, because my aspect ratio is 16 by 9, which is obvious because it's 1600 by 900, I can easily downsample to 1280 by 720 or any of these smaller sizes to just have it so that I can just quickly pop it into the editor and export it and get it up onto YouTube. But I don't have a problem just quickly resizing this after the fact, so I leave it at the starting dimension. However, if you downsize it, you want to pay attention to this filter setting. By default, it will start at bicubic sharper detail. This is about medium quality for your video. If you have a slower computer, you will want to set this at bicubic or bilinear, which will be easier on your hardware. But if you want the best detail, you want this Lanxos best detail 36 samples setting. And then you want 30 frames per second or above. You can put this to 60 frames per second, it'll make the recording much smoother, however, you're not really gaining a whole lot when you upload it to YouTube, as YouTube downsamples everything to 30 frames per second anyway. So I'm just going to leave that at don't downscale, that'll leave that up to you. You can also select from both of your monitors if you have more than one monitor that you're playing around with. 
and we will say, yes, I'd love to apply those settings. Afterwards, you can play around with your audio. None of this is particularly necessary to tweak around with. If you are um, messing around with a microphone, you might want to put push to talk so you don't constantly hear breathing if you're not running your audio through something that can filter that out. Otherwise, you don't need to mess around with this. Just make sure it's got your input device set up properly for your computer audio. These you can leave default, and then we'll jump down to advanced. So most of this, again, you can leave um, alone. You want to use multi-thread optimization, allow other modifiers on hotkeys. Um, for CPU presets, it starts out at very fast. If you have a slower computer, you'll want to go to super fast or ultra fast. Do note both of these settings will slightly affect your quality. I can set mine up to slower if I wanted to, but for the most part you're not going to see a huge change in quality from very fast to faster. And then for the encoding profile, main is just um, regular medium quality and high make sure it's high quality. So keyframe intervals, not important for most people. Do not have this selected. CFR is for streaming purposes only and will jank up your recordings locally. Most of the rest of this stuff down here you can just ignore. However, I do want to note custom H.264 encoding settings are something you might want to pay attention to. CFRF basically controls the quality of your recording. If you want to manually boost the quality of what you're recording, you can click you can click this custom button and you can say CFR or CRF 0 is maximum quality uncompressed. This is like 75% compression or not 75% compression. This is 75% uncompressed and I think it goes up to 68. If you want to play around with the settings, I would Google it, and you can see some very lovely documentation on how to customize this. However, for the most part, all of your settings will take care of themselves just selecting these basic settings. So we'll click Apply. We will close these settings by clicking OK. And now we get to set up our scene so that we can record. So first we'll say, um, what is this? My recording scene. So we'll just say, recording. If I can jank my fingers on my keyboard. And then for sources, we will add what we're recording. So we can just capture a window that we're playing around with if it's not a video game. We can just capture whatever our monitor sees, which will not always recommended for video games. We can do an image capture, an image slideshow, something more global. But what we want is down here at the bottom called game capture. And what we'll do is since we don't want to have to set up multiple scenes, we'll just start naming the games that we're recording. So let's just do Dark Souls 2, because that's what I'll be recording in a few minutes. And here comes our selection of options. So the first thing you want to do is, yes, I would love to select an application. And you go to this pull down, and you say, oh, here it is, Dark Souls 2. Make sure that the game you're going to play around with is running at the time you set this up. If it doesn't show up immediately because you've started the game after you started setting everything up, just hit this refresh button and it should appear in the settings roster. After that, we have a few other options here. I don't mess around with using hotkeys to dynamically change between my sources. I do my uh, programs one at a time, so you can ignore this. But do we want to stretch image to screen? No. You want to decide if you want to capture your mouse cursor. Most of the time it'll just jit around in the middle of the screen, so unless you need your mouse, like an example of StarCraft II or other RTS games, you'd want that. But for the most part, you just don't want to capture your mouse. None of this is particularly useful. You want to leave your gamma at the default setting, click OK, and then I can hit either Start Recording or NumPad0, and there it shall start recording. I can jump here, move my stuff around. Now you can see that some stuff started happening on the screen. Then I can stop recording, and that'll appear wherever you set up your recording source to. See, so isn't that handy? Well, 
I've been Larry the Chupacabra. Hopefully this helps you set up your settings for OBS, Open Broadcast Software. If you have any questions or comments or something's just bugging you and you can't quite figure it out, feel free to leave a comment and I will try to help you as best as I can. But do make sure to try and Google it first because that's usually what I'm going to do anyway. Otherwise, don't forget to like and subscribe, especially tap that like button if this helped you out, and I will catch you next time. Toodaloo!